Good. All right. Um, well, thank you everyone for joining today's webinar. Uh, chat, sorry, I can't hear you. the translation in Spanish, please. Okay, make sure that's working first. Um, test one, two, three. Is it working now? You can hear me now in Spanish? Okay. Sí, correcto. All right. Um, speaking of interpretation, um, I'm going to actually ask Carmen to just make a quick announcement about how to enable interpretation and get into the right language. Hola, ¿qué tal? Eh, voy a hablar en español un momento. Hello, para que... everyone. I'm going to speak in Spanish for a minute. If everyone wants to join the simultaneous interpretation, you can join the globe at the bottom of the screen. It says interpretation or interpretation language, and then you can select the language of your preference. There's Spanish, English, and Portuguese. We go back to Chad, who's going to speak in Spanish, and you can select the Spanish channel and Portuguese as well. Thank you. Thanks, Carmen. Um, yeah, I'll give everyone a, a moment to get over to their language. I'll be speaking in English. Um, we'll go back and forth between English and Spanish. So um, make sure you have that interpretation clicked. Just a quick overview of what we plan to cover today. So this webinar is really going to be focused on the matchmaking component of the Connex Tech Prize that we're, that we're running currently, that um, applications are open. Um, first, I am going to just kind of talk through give you a, a, an introduction to Conservation X Labs in case you don't know who we are um, and an overview of the Connex Tech Prize. And then we're we're super um, honored, excited, um, blessed to have Lee Cassidy and Janela Chalco on the line. Um, they're gonna really talk about how they, uh, in a previous competition that, that Conservation X Labs ran, um, came together, started collaborating, and have continued that collaboration um, into a brand new venture. And we're really excited to to have them talk about, you know, the sort of matchmaking process that they went through and and how it's sort of benefited their work. Um, and so uh, Carmen will actually um, help um, uh, with that portion of the of the webinar. And then I'm going to come back on and go into sort of more details around the matchmaking process and how it, we plan to implement it for this particular prize. Um, and then hopefully we'll leave plenty of time for questions and answers for folks that, that might have some. So just to get things kicked off, um, again, welcome everyone. My name is Chad Gallinat. I've been with Conservation X Labs for about a little over six years now, run a lot of these types of uh, prizes and challenges. And uh, my current role is called Foundry Director. Very quick note on who we are uh, in case in case you're not familiar. So Conservation X Labs, we are a innovation and technology company that has a conservation mission to prevent the sixth mass extinction. And the way we do that is through uh, creating and incentivizing technological solutions that we think can match the speed and the scale of the problems that we're, we're witnessing firsthand as, as we're going through the six mass extinction. Um, we do that through a, th a few different sort of pillars of activity. Um, one is directed innovation. This is essentially engineering. So we have three teams in-house, uh, three engineering teams that are building you know, breakthrough technological solutions for conservation currently. I'm not going to go into any detail on that, but if, if that's of interest, please do check out our, our website. You can see um, the Sentinel team, the Wild Me team, and the Thylacine team are the three product teams that, that are, are currently uh, developing these engineering solutions. Um, we also then have uh, a, a pillar of activity that we're here to talk about today. It's called open innovation. And so when we talk about open innovation, we're talking about prizes, challenges, hackathons, those type of activities to, um, to really engage new solvers in the problems that we've identified. And I'll get into more detail about this Connex Tech Prize in, in a few slides, but um, you know, we really see open innovation as, as a way to harness sort of planetary genius. Um, we really we're really good at finding you know these these really difficult problems to solve and we also recognize that there's genius everywhere that can help us solve those problems and and we use open innovation activities to 
bring those people into our into our realm and to to focus their technologies, their solutions on the problems that we've identified. And then we have a third pillar of activity. I'm not going to go into much detail, which we we talk about reinventing conservation. And so, um, open innovation plays into it because we're really trying to bring new people into into the conservation world. Um, and really help to you know empower global sol solvers for conservation. So we have a few other activities that are related to the sort of reinventing that I'm, I'm not going to get 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 into any detail there. Anyway, focus on open innovation. So what we've done over the past eight years as an organization is we've run about, I think, on the order of 15, 16 um, prizes or challenges. Um, we've supported over 140 different innovations, so solution teams such as yourselves. Um, those solution teams, we've we've given away, it's not on the slide, but we've given away over $12 million to those 140 uh, solutions. And those those have uh, gone on to raise an additional $300 million after working with us. So we, we feel pretty confident that we're good at, you know, recruiting really smart people that are really, you know, solving problems that we've 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 identified and we're a global organization so we've we've in, we've worked with with groups from over actually i think this number is a little out of date over 70 countries at this point um and so we have this you know just to say we have a proven record of you know really helping to um incentivize these sort of impactful solutions in the conservation space and we're continuing to do that with this prize and with a couple of others that we'll be launching soon so this prize in particular, we're calling it the Connex Tech Prize, the Amazon. This is an innovation competition, uh, really focused at building prototypes, early, early stage prototypes. Our theme is really building regenerative economies from the Amazon. So really moving away from the sort of traditional extractive focused uh, uh, economies that, that have really you know, plagued and been a, a driver of deforestation and other sort of significant issues in the Amazon to a more regenerative modern economy. And with that theme, um, we are going to award over $100,000 in prize money. And the way that we're distributing this is 20 finalists will get $3,500 to develop a prototype early stage proof of concept. Again, this is really meant to bring things out of people's minds, off of paper, and really get it into, you know, into real world solutions. So how do we, how do we take that $3,500 and build actual sort of early, early stage prototypes or, you know, proofs of concept based on work that you've maybe been doing already, just need that little extra, you know, incentive to create a prototype. And then once we receive, um, in, and we'll be asking all those 20 finalists that have delivered, that have built a prototype to send us some information about those prototypes, less for you know a video and, and any other sort of supporting data um, to show that the thing actually exists, that you've created it. Um, we'll be awarding three uh, prizes, one grand prize of $20,000 and two secondary prizes of $5,000 um, amongst those 20 finalists. So you know, there's an opportunity to win almost $25,000 to really support the development of your, of your prototypes. Um, again, it's really meant to bring things from paper, from your mind into, into real life. How do we build these early stage proofs of concept and prototypes? And that's what we're really focused on here. Um, again, this is a global competition. So although it's focused in the Amazon, we are accepting anyone from anywhere in the world can apply. Um, and these are really, you know, cutting edge, advanced science and tech innovations to, uh, to transform Amazon's sort of extractive economies into these more modern and regenerative ones. And the way that that looks is <clears throat> essentially we're looking for things that, that, again, tech innovation driven solutions to help create replacements. We talk a lot about food, feed, fiber, materials. How do we find new new sources for those things um, that that get away from that sort of extractive focused economy. And so um, we're really focusing on, on replacements. Thematically, the way the prize is, is organized into sort of basically two areas. So innovations for the sustainable alternatives and food, feed, fiber materials, the replacements. We're looking for things like replacement proteins, cosmetics, uh, food additives, packaging solutions. Anything that is a replacement 
that uh, of a product that currently exists in the market. And then the second pillar is really around practices that support the production of these replacements. So that could include, you know, things like sustainable production systems. And just really quickly, I'm going to mention um, a couple of examples. Um, and I, we took these examples from a previous competition that we ran around microfiber pollution. So these were a couple of the companies that applied and 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 uh, were finalists, one 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 winner, but Tandem Repeat. So they created a replacement fiber, um, you know, using a unique protein structure that was originally found in tentacles of squid, and so working with uh, you know molecular biologists, engineers, they were able to uh, sequence the genome and design what they say is the world's strongest and fastest self healing material. And so this can be made into fibers that go into uh, textiles, reduce microfiber shedding, um, are adhesives for electronic and other industrial applications, all sorts of different replacement applications. So this Tandem Repeat is the name of the company that that delivered this squid-based um, um, solution. Not taking from the squids, but actually understanding you know, what the genetic sequence of the squid was and then repeating that in a synthetic process. The other, um, the other example that we want to highlight on, around the practices is, is a co company called Mango Materials. And they really, they developed an innovative manufacturing process that turns methane waste, uh, waste carbon emissions into actually biodegradable poly bio polyester films. And so by feeding some of their waste methane um, gas into uh, these, these non-genetically modified bacteria, the team was able to create this this novel fermentation process to create the sort of you know building blocks of potential um, bioplastics. So um, just a couple of of examples of things that we are looking for. Now these aren't relevant to the Amazon context, but these are just kind of just to give you an illustrative uh, example of the types of things that we when we mean replacements or what we mean by practices. And encourage you to look at their websites. These are really two innovative companies that we think very highly of. Excuse me. Um, a note on where we're we're looking for um, example or we're looking for applications from, and then I'm going to hand it back over to Carmen. So, you know, we like I, like I mentioned, this is a global competition, so we're welcoming innovations, innovators from anywhere in the world. But we are focused because this is focused on the Amazon. We're focused in a few different countries like Peru, Colombia, Brazil. So we're especially. Um, focused on, in, on, on encouraging innovators from those countries to apply. Um, that being said, this is still a global organization. And part of the matchmaking process that I'm going to get to in a, in a few moments is going to outline why we're interested in, in bringing people together from you know, outside of the region with people inside of the region um, and why we feel like that will really help us be successful in, in developing these sorts of replacement products based on a more a modern and sustainable regenerative economy. All right, I'm going to pause for a few moments, hand it over to um, Carmen. She will be speaking in Spanish, so make sure you have your uh, interpretation on. And she's going to welcome, um, again, uh, Lee and Janella, who created a new partnership based on a previous program that we, we weren't even trying to create new matches but they they've they've grown with one another and have started a new company together um and i will stop talking because that's their story and it's much more interesting to hear from them carmen uh, would you like to introduce our next speakers hello everyone i'll give you a second to switch channels i will speak in spanish Lee, also, you can go to switch to the English channel. Everyone who needs a different interpretation, this is your time to change. I will quickly introduce myself. My name is Carmen Zarate. I am the coordinator of the Amazon, yeah, Amazon programs. I will introduce Janela Chalco. We have worked together in Madre de Dios. I had the opportunity to work with them and bring them together. And I am very happy to meet here so we can share your experience. Janela is currently the project assistant and is also a partner with Lee in the United Project. 
They work together in the artisan mining in the Amazon. The, she's a metallurgical engineer and also environmental engineer. She just graduated, so many congratulations on that. And I also want to introduce Lee. Chat, if you can help me by switching the slides so we can introduce Lee as well. And I invite you to turn on your cameras if you want. Lee Cassidy is currently the uh, founder and CEO of Nadi, as she was a finalist and then the winner of the Arisan Mining Project in the Amazon with the same project, which she will comment on later. She is based out of Scotland, but with a lot of with a bigger wish to come work on the region for the Amazon projects. And I will start very quickly with some questions for you. Maybe since I'm speaking in Spanish, I will start with Janela and then I will move on to Lee. Janela, could you talk to us about the challenges that you found in this collaborations with Lee throughout the project? It would be very interesting to know because we know that you're based in Peru, Lee's based in Scotland, maybe the language was an issue. We would be very happy to know how, how you face this process. Hello, Carmen. Hello, everyone. My name is Janela, and it has been very very good working with Lee. We had a few issues regarding the language barrier because Lee was very fluent in English. My English was a little bit basic. And slowly we have uh, slowly work with it. Janela, I think. Audio cut off for a second. I was saying that working with Lee, we had a few challenges, maybe the language barrier, but we slowly sort of solved it. The more we work with each other, the more we talk to each other, the Google Translator app worked great for us. And the word that we used mostly was, I don't understand. Can you repeat, please? Repeat, repeat, repeat. And Lee told me a lot, actually what the lab testing and field testing was. That's how we connected because we spoke the same language there. We communicated in different languages, so to speak, but in the testing room, everything was the same. It was a very nice experience. That's great, Jenny. Lee, I wanted to ask based off what Janela said, how do you think that having a multidisciplinary team between her and yourself and also the minor who works in Madre Dios, how did that help to sort of move this forward? Um, we couldn't have done it without the, the local team. So Janela in particular, but also the guys at CT Minero helped facilitate things as the, the Conservation X team. But as Janela said, the language barrier was much less in the lab than just in general conversational terms. Um, quite a lot of technical and business words are very similar in either language. Um, so as she said, we, we relied quite heavily on the Google Translate app and speaking very slowly. That was the, the clue to our success, I think. Neither of us spoke at the normal speed we would. And Lee, did you, from the time that you won the competition to be a finalist, did you find a lot of value in having this team, sort of meeting a team from within the region? Yes, yes, because, I mean, 
since we won the competition, we've now started a new company uh, designed completely to take this technology forward in the Amazon. Um, Janela and the other people there are core to that, but especially Janela. Um, going forward, once we've achieved the, the funding and done the survey, it's intended that Janela will be the Peru lead. I I love Peru, but I'm not going to live there. I live in Scotland, so she'll be in charge for the, the Peru stuff. That's so great to hear. And Janela, I want to ask you, with what Lee just mentioned, how do you think that your professional background added value and how this collaboration added value to your life and to your career because we're seeing that this competition has different expertise in contact and the fact that those can bring can be brought together in different teams how do you feel that for me like the opportunity uh, of this project and everything surrounding i thought that it was wonderful at first because uh, being focused on something like the environment, it is a kind of work where you can start very small, but you can reach great results. And even more so now that mining is everywhere, not only in Peru. So being able to regenerate and rebuild that ecosystem, the water, the ground. And when somebody mentioned this to me, I thought it was great. And after that, working with Lee, I had a separate outlook on the world. And there's science and technology that can be applicable, not only in Peru, but only in other places, and can help to rebuild our ecosystem, can help a lot. And Lee, with her knowledge and the patience that she had with me in the lab work that I was doing, here in Peru, we work very conventionally within the lab context. And over there in Scotland, lab work is a lot more practical, more advanced. The science is a lot more advanced than here to what we know here in Peru, maybe. So I I get I got to see another point of view on how things can be connected and how can be researched and can, what kind of work can be done to preserve the ecosystem. I think that it's great that this whole experience has added value to you as a professional and as a person and can contribute to everything. And I think great news that comes from this, as I understand it, is that you're thinking of continue. Now it has a different name. It started as him. And now, Lee, maybe you can comment on it. I think we should have started there. Maybe you could explain to us, like in a few words, what that is and the kind of work that you're doing presently. And then we can move on to Janela so she can comment on next steps. Um, sorry, I'm not entirely sure what you mean, Carmen. Uh, I'll go again. Are you on the English channel? Yeah, yeah. I was saying that maybe you could talk about a little bit about what SEM is or what it was or and what are the next steps with it that it's currently under a different name, what kind of projects you're working on, so the people who are listening can know a little bit about it. Yeah, sure. So I used to be the lead scientist for a company called SEM, who are focused on mainly resource recovery. So we take nutrients, metals, any kind of valuable resource, and we generally harvest them from waste products from another industry. Um, SEM is quite a small company. So unfortunately, even though we won the Conservation X project, 
um, they were unable to commit to delivering it full time. There's other technologies that they're going to have to focus on first. So what I've done is I have got the legal license to use DRAM for the mining operations stuff and started a new company called Nibinabi um, independently. So the idea with Nibinabi is we will focus on regeneration of artisanal gold mines. Um, and the idea is we'll have a series of regional hubs where we not only treat the environmental issues, but we also recover the metallic equivalent of fishing bycatch. So the miners are only focused on getting gold, but the tailings ponds have lots and lots of other metals, which are still very valuable. We aim to recover them, and uh, that will be the main financing of the company. Furthermore, the way that we will encourage the miners to join the scheme is they will be paid a small royalty when we sell the other metals. So they'll be invested in it from the start. That will encourage them to participate in the programme. So that's how we intend to go forward. So we're going to start in Peru, but then move on the whole of Latin America and ultimately, hopefully, Africa and Asia too. Well, muchísimas gracias por That's great. Thank you so much for Lee. And Janela, maybe sort of to wrap up, we want to thank you both for being a part of this webinar. We wanted to ask you, how sort of do you have the courage to carry on working with Lee? And what are your aspirations maybe regarding the project? and from you personally. Like I mentioned before, working with Lee for me has been so great. I have learned a lot from her. And when she mentioned that the, her company was coming out, I said, yes, I didn't even think about it because the ideas that Lee has to continue the work in environment recovery, I think that a lot of great work can be done from it, and then we can contribute a lot to what society as a whole needs from the side of mining to avoid as much contamination. I'm very happy to be honest and uh, I'm learning a lot from her she's very patient in terms of teaching and hopefully this will allow me to grow professionally and maybe uh, in the future grow in the same field in the same area of work because and maybe why not be able to implement new technologies that can be implemented for the future Some final words, maybe, to sort of push innovators forward to create these multidisciplinary groups, multinational groups as well. The idea that it works across borders, Janela and Lee, some final words. Lee, maybe we'll tell you. Sure. I, I think that working internationally is the way to go. Um, we've seen from previous instances that environmental concerns, particularly in the form of climate change, knows no national boundaries. So the only way that anybody is going to solve anything is through collaboration. And it has to be international collaboration. And the areas that are going to be most adversely affected by it have every right to be involved. It shouldn't just be the bigger Western nations coming in and telling people what to do. The the developing nations need to have a really big say in this and they need to help found it and develop it. So yeah, go for it. You can you can all do it. It's it's great to collaborate and you always learn something new. So Janella said she learned a lot, as did I.
y del señor Aquiles y sus perritos. I'm from her puppies as well. Janet, Janet maybe some final words so we can to, to sort of sum up what has been this kind of work. Maybe a recommendation. Don't be afraid of these teams, these international teams, because maybe it can open doors for you. And also, any situation in life, there's always going to be a start that maybe scares us, but that shouldn't really hold us. It should push us forward. I don't think that anything is impossible or that it can't be done, like we've shown with Lee. And even if the biggest barrier was language, at the end of the day, the project worked great, and language was the last thing that we were thinking about. We didn't even remember that that started as an issue. So go ahead with it. And hopefully you'll get it done. Thank you so much, ladies. You're more than welcome to stay for the rest of the webinar, to be with us. We are uh, all in touch and we hope to get news from you. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll move back to Chad now. He's going to speak in English, so please, the people who don't speak English or and speak Portuguese or Spanish, be sure to enable the interpretation and select your desired language. Awesome. Thank you, Carmen. And really, thank you, Janela. Thank you, Lee. Um, I think that's a, it's a really inspiring story um, that you guys have and, you know, one that we obviously follow with great interest and um, rooting for you and hopefully provide an example of why we're doing this uh, matchmaking process for this this new prize, the Connex Tech Prize. And so um, I do want to, um, you know, talk a little bit about the specifics around the matchmaking process here. And hopefully you can draw off of what Lee and Janela were just talking about in, in, in participating in the process going forward. Um, so why are we doing this? <laughs> well, first of all, um, I think we really wanted to, you know, not only provide an opportunity for innovators from anywhere to, to apply here, but we really wanted to create new teams. Um, we wanna test international um, collaborations like the one you just heard about, interdisciplinary teams um, to really build this sort of dynamic, um, um, for lack of a better word, synergy among the participants who might, you know, you know, you might not have had the chance to work together otherwise. And we hope that, you know, by through this matchmaking process, you're actually able to really improve upon the innovations that you're considering. So I want to just make that point, first of all. And so um, through this process, you're going to have the same opportunity that Lee and Janela just talked about um, in getting to, you know, meet other folks from that, that you might not have otherwise been able to work with. Um, you can pair up with brand new people. You might have a team that you want to add some expertise to. Um, that's also a perfectly apl applicable for the matchmaking process. If you're an individual and you don't have an idea for a, 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 an innovation, but you wanna be part of a team, please join the matchmaking process. We're gonna help you find a team. We're gonna help you develop those ideas. So that's really the, the focus of the matchmaking process. We really wanna build really good innovations and we feel that these international um, interdisciplinary um, partnerships will help build really good innovations. Um, and it's important for the scoring. So one of our key, um, or sorry, one of our criteria that we'll be evaluating uh, applications is going to look at the team. Um, and so in order to get that full 10 points, um, it's not it's not required by any means, but in order to get that full 10 points for this for this um, for this criteria, you will need to have someone from the Amazon region. We're not going to be looking at addresses to see oh like this person is actually in the Amazon, but you know we want to see that you have the experience and you're from the region and can help build on, onto the other team or you can help add to a team. So so just making that point that in order to get that full 10 points, um, you are going to need to to show us that your team is interdisciplinary and has someone from the region. Um, really quickly, I'm going to step through this uh, relatively quickly, uh, just to give you a sense of how we're doing this and how you can can um, up, start to apply. So we have on our on the on the website 
Um, there's a, a button you can click, help me build my team. It's going to take you to a new uh, a form, the matchmaking form. Um, and what the form is going to take you through a series of questions. I think we made it pretty easy, so I don't think it should take too long. And the forms are available in all three languages. Um, obviously, we're going to ask for your name and contact information. Um, a little bit about your professional background, um, basically, yeah, your experience and what you're currently doing. Um, we then want to know like which which of those areas are you interested in working in? Are you want to help develop the replacement materials themselves or are you more on the sort of practices and methodology side? And then I think important is question number 19. And that's really what what do you need out of this matchmaking process? Again, if you don't have an idea for a solution, but you still want to participate, please fill out this form. We're going to help you find a team. Um, but if you have a team and you recognize that you need, you know, some additional expertise, maybe you are looking to recruit someone from the region. Um, also, we're looking, please fill out the matchmaking form there. And so those are the, basically the two options on, on question 19. I have, a, I have a team and an idea. I'm ready to move forward and with, with a new team member, or I don't have an idea. I'm an individual and I'm looking for a team. So those are kind of the, the, the two ways that we're thinking about it. And then we ask for your skills. So where, at, you know, if if you're an individual who wants to participate, like where, what what skills can you bring to those team? And we we have a few different. Um, you can you can list out th up to three different sort of skill sets um, from a pre-selected list. If you already have a team or already have an idea and are looking to add to your team, you can also pitch your idea here. So put your idea just very briefly, less than three hundred words, and then. Again, what are the type of skills that you're looking for to bolster your team? So um, those are the sort of you know two options based on on what your what your needs are for matchmaking. And then we're also going to look at a little more detail about like what kind of what what kind of team member are you looking for? Are you the leader type? Are you looking for someone to sort of you know shape the overall vision? Do you need an engineer? Are you an engineer? Um, are you more on the business side of things? So 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 we. Put a few different options here and we encourage everyone to kind of um you know fill in what you'd like there um and then language so if you're only speaking you know only comfortable speaking in one of these languages please indicate that um if you're bilingual or trilingual we'll also accommodate that it might actually help with with some of the team formation um but but um fill in these and then we ask for a team size preference what inspired you and the way, the reason we're asking for all these questions is because we're going to take all that data and we are going to suggest some certain matches. So we're going to try to place some teams together. It doesn't mean a whole lot. It's just sort of based on, you know, the way you guys have filled out the forms, we'll start to, 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 to match individuals up and, and teams with individuals. Ultimately, though, the participants will, you'll, you'll decide if and who you want to work with. So, so our suggestions will just sort of be suggestions and you'll still have the opportunity to meet others um, outside of the suggested uh, matches that we provide. Um, and uh, we'll be doing this on a virtual dynamic. So we'll, we'll be following up with you uh, via email to provide further details, timing, um, all of the relevant, you know, necessary information. Um, and then we will be hosting a dynamic, a virtual dynamic sometime in April. Um, what else do I want to say? So again, um, you're going to receive an, an invitation uh, tailored to your participants to join the dynamic. Then um, during the session, you'll, you know, we're going to ask all the participants to be, to be, you know, prepared to share your background information, why you're interested in this, um, what your motivations are and, 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 you know, take it from there. So it'll be, it'll be a little bit of like a speed dating type thing, a little bit of a, a group dynamic, um, and then some sort of breakout room. So it'll be a mixture of a bunch of different things that we hope with the idea to really get you to know one another. Um, and again, you'll initially um, interact with, with people based on the preferences that you've indicated in your matchmaking form that we will, will partner you with, but then you're going to have the opportunity to talk to everyone else. So again, We'll suggest this, the dynamics, the synergies, but ultimately participants, you guys will decide who you want to work with going forward. Um, quick note on time um, or on, on deadlines. So um, we are, are currently um, planning to close the matchmaking process at the end of March, March 29th. So please, if you're interested in participating, fill out the matchmaking form by March 29th. Um, and we will follow up uh, shortly after that with more information. And then 
between March 29th and April 26th is when you'll get to work with your team to develop your concept that you will apply. So the deadline for application for submitting your innovation idea is April 26th. The deadline for submitting your information on the matchmaking is the end of March, March 29th. And frankly, we'll probably be extending the mar the the, the um, matchmaking deadline of March 29th a little bit because we have some additional um, uh, events that are happening in early April. So I, I anticipate that'll get moved a little bit, but for now it's March 29th. And then again, it's or, and sometime in probably early to mid April, we'll be hosting this matchmaking dynamic after which you should have uh, roughly two to three weeks to pre prepare your submissions and apply by the April 26th deadline. Um, here, I'm just showing the application timeline. Um, so again, submissions due April 26th. Uh, there will be a peer feedback process. I'm not going to go into details there. You can watch our previous webinar about, about that, that goes into a little bit of detail on the peer feedback, but we'll be providing a lot all the information. So you don't really need to understand that right now. Um, we will be, uh, for, for the folks that take play, take part of the peer feedback process, you'll have a little additional time to submit your application until May 17th. And then we will announce the finalists, the 20 award winners of those, of that three, three, $3,500 um, to develop your prototypes. You will then have uh, until September to develop your prototype, submit some information, some data that what you've developed actually exists. And in, in sometime in October of this year, we will announce our winners. Um, and I think that's it. So with that, um, let's just, uh, I wanna open it up to some questions. I think there's a couple that have come in. Um, and I will also ask Carmen to join me on the stage to help with some translation. Um, and... sí, yo, yo lo, yo, yo voy con esta pregunta porque está. En... I am gonna go with this question because it's in Spanish. Hello, would you help with the language issues in order to link with a team from another country? Yes. During the matchmaking process, we will be able to help at uh, the beginning. So we would help them sort of connect with people who speak the same language. But after that, we could connect meetings with uh, translation. Not every single one, but we could sort of help with the matching. There would be no problem. There's... Um, I'm speaking Spanish, Chad. Maybe you can. Yep. You can continue, so the recording can continue. Um. Yeah. So uh, Fabian had asked any experience on how much work can I expect for this. Um. Yeah. Don't quit your day job quite yet. Um. You know. I think in terms of developing the application, we tried to make the application form relatively easy um so hopefully you know that shouldn't if you have an idea already and you're already sort of like been contemplating or have 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 a concept in in mind it shouldn't take very long um i i think you know it probably would take i would say two to three hours to fill out the application if you already have something in mind if you're if you're if you're already kind of uh, if, if if it's a brand new idea that you haven't even thought of yet, then I, who know that could take a little bit more. Um, but our idea is is that that probably there's some people that are already kind of working in the space or already have some ideas around this and and are are ready to to apply. So hopefully it won't take very long. In terms of the matchmaking, um, that matchmaking form is very simple. That shouldn't take more than a. a more than an hour to complete half an hour tops um and the matchmaking process itself it's going to be pretty straightforward we will have the one um the dynamic in in early april um and that will be about an hour and a half and so then after that you know when you're working with the team i would expect you know if you do form a new team based on the matchmaking process i would anticipate you know you'd want to work meet meet a couple of times a week over the course of the next couple of weeks um, to develop your concept with that, with that team member. Um, it's, you know, the idea is to, to, um, incentivize folks, um, to work on this, um, to not quit your day jobs quite yet, but hopefully at the end of, you know, the, the prototyping period and come October and you have a successful product or potential product, 
you know, hopefully you can have a story like Janella and, and Lee have and, and start a brand new organization that could be successful. We will be, I mean, we didn't go into much detail about the, the process of the prize, but we do have, um, you know, within our network, a number of investors that are looking at this. We have a robust partnership with, with many organizations throughout Latin America um, that will really help to scale some of the products. At least that's our goal. And so, um, you know, Hopefully it does become something where you can, you know, especially folks that are really passionate about the space and passionate about making change can really, um, you know, be successful. I'm going to take a quick moment before I, there's another question that came in, um, Carmen. Um, so we do have this innovator handbook that I'm showing here. I'm going to advance the slide. No, actually, I'm not going to advance the slide. Just a quick note, the innovator handbook you can download on the website has all of the information about the prize. So, so all the detail that is that exists for the prize is in this innovator handbook. So I encourage anyone that's interested to download the handbook. Um, and for the matchmaking process, here's a QR codes for the three different languages. Um, this will take you to our survey monkey where we're, we're uh, um, accepting all the matchmaking uh, applications. So I'll, I'll leave that up probably for the rest of the time while, while, we, while we talk through this. Um, Carmen, did you want to go into the next question? Sí, yo lo, yo voy con esto. Sure, I'll do this one. I would like to know more. I would like to know more closely about the matchmaking process and how, where can I reach out? The main issue is that if you want to be a part of the matchmaking pro process, like Chad said, you can see it on the website. My uh, Associate Maria Fernanda, link them over there in English, Spanish, and Portuguese so you can sign up and show you're interested. You can join with an idea and without a team, without a team and without an idea and build everything from the ground up uh, or with an idea and maybe recruit somebody that you think would add a lot more value to this idea. So that is what the matchmaking process is supposed to do. It has a deadline. Uh, at the end of this month, March 29th, and after that, we're going to send more details so we can have a day, two days at most, on how this sort of session is going to happen. And once the teams are formed, the definitive teams, you're going to have two or three additional weeks to submit your idea at the end of the month of April. So whoever feels like building a team, proposing an idea, please go into the links. And my associate Maria Fernanda put in the chat, sign up, don't be afraid. I've, I've seen that a lot of, there's a lot of fear around the language issue. We have seen the Google Translate. It's actually a unique tool that really helps and especially in the prototyping stage, we will provide translation for the sessions that we're going to have. But as a team, I'm sure that you can internally deal with the language barriers and the and the time zone barriers, which is something that happened. Uh, Janelle is in Peru, Lee is in Scotland. There's like seven hours difference. Don't be afraid of these things when there's a purpose and everyone has the same idea in mind with eyes on the prize, all of the issues sort of fall away. So please join this matchmaking process and their chat just display the QR codes so you can scan them and go directly. Thank you. Carmen, there's there's another question that came in in Spanish and I'll just add on. Sí, sí. Um, <laughs> Just mm -hmm. one more note um, on this, you know, so by submitting the matchmaking form, it doesn't commit you to anything. Ultimately, like I mentioned, you're going to have the opportunity to work with people, um, you know, based on your preference. So so the, by no means does, does, does filling out the matchmaking process or our suggestions obligate you to, to work with any particular team. So, you know, you'll, you'll talk to folks, you'll get comfortable mm -hmm. with, with folks, and then you can work from there. So um, don't, don't, yeah, don't feel like, you know, oh, I'm submitting the matchmaking process. Now I have to work with people. That's not the case. You can, you, you completely up to, up to you, obviously. Okay. Carmen. Correcto. 
That is right. I'm going to answer this question in Spanish. How do we know who wants to build, make part of our teams? It's from both sides. So if you want to join a team or you want to receive people in your team, that is why this process is virtually where you sort of get introduced. You're going to have a chat and see if there's indeed a match with you and with the team. So with individual people, with the team as a whole. Nobody is obligated to sort of get a team and come out of that meeting with the team. It can happen or it doesn't need to. Even if there's already formed teams ahead that are comfortable with each other, you can be a part of this with no problem. But in the process, we've noticed that sometimes they like to be a part of a new team or build one from the ground up or vice versa. So this is meant for them. We developed this matchmaking process for those people don't feel obligated in any way. Yep. And and Can just we... just so it's just so it's clear and and um and I I think it's clear, but you know the um just pulling the the timeline back up. So in addition to the matchmaking process, so obviously you will come up with through the matchmaking dynamic. Um, after filling out your form, so we know you want to participate, um, you'll form a team, and then you that team will have, have to submit an application. So, so there's essentially, if you're participating in the matchmaking process, you'll have to fill out two two forms, one for the matchmaking process, and then again the application for the actual competition. Just in case that wasn't clear, I wanted to make sure that that we we made that point before we close. And again, um, matchmaking. Um, Forms are due at March 29th. Um, don't wait. Get that in as soon as possible, even though I, I, I we probably will extend it a little bit, <laughs> frankly. But um, still, just get it in there because we because we're going to start to match, do some of the matchmaking work um, even before the deadline. Um, and then once we once we finalize our date for the, the online dynamic, again, this will be an hour to an hour and a half event. Um, we'll send out all the, the relevant information for you guys to participate in that. And something we're really looking, really looking forward to actually we've spent a lot of time thinking about how the best ways to 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 match people and the best ways to well, propose matches and and have like a a, a fun dynamic um online. So um, again, uh, once that once once that date's settled, we'll we'll send out all that additional information. I don't see any other questions, so I think we can close the webinar um, a few minutes early. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lee Janella. This was um, really really inspiring for for us to hear. I, I, even though we we know the story well, it's still awesome to hear, um, especially in this format. I hope that their story inspired some of you guys listening to this webinar. Um, and if 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 you didn't hear it clearly, we're recording this. We're going to post this um, on our website so you can go back and listen to the story again. And um, you know, thank you so much for attending the webinar, and best of luck. Gracias. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, Emilia. Gracias. 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 Yeah. Bye, Lee.